Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. I've been working on a new quilt pattern. It has hearts and it has pinwheels. It's very nice for Valentine's Day. So this is just my rough sketch, but I made some of the blocks. I've got a few hearts, I've got a few pinwheels, and I think this is gonna turn out really nice. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to make this. So let's get some fabric and get started. Now for this pattern, you're going to need either quarter yards or fat quarters. I'm gonna use quarter yards. And I have this very nice group of fabrics from Riley Blake. It's called Love Letters. So we need six quarter yards that are colorful and three quarter yards that you would consider background that are almost plain or very light. For this quilt, we have two blocks. We have a heart block and a pinwheel block. Now we're gonna start making the heart blocks first because part of this block that's left over goes to make the pinwheel blocks. Now I'm going to take the three background fabrics, these light ones, and set them aside. Then I'm gonna take each one of these quarter yards and cut it in half. So if you're using fat quarters, you're also going to cut them in half, but you'll be cutting in the opposite direction. So we're gonna cut them all in half and restack them up so we've got one of each print. So this is all we need to cut our hearts out of. So I'm gonna get all six fabrics here. And then these that I'm setting down over here, we're going to use for our binding. Now for the cutting, it's gonna be a lot easier if you get the free pattern. It'll be the link right below the video, the first link. Then you can see exactly which sizes I'm using here. So I'm cutting the body of the hearts. So I'm going to cut a six and a half inch width of fabric here. And I'm using my weight to help hold down my plastic ruler because it keeps it from sliding. So I've got a six and a half inch wide piece here. And then I'm gonna cut one strip out of this extra and it's one and a quarter inches wide. And this is going to be a little border on our pinwheel blocks. Now we're gonna take this six and a half inch wide piece here and I'm going to cut it into three and a half inch sections. And we need 21 inches this way, which we can get from our fabric, but you do have to be careful that you don't cut a lot off at the beginning here. Now we're going to work on the background fabric. So I'm going to use up the whole quarter yard here. If you're using fat quarters, yours won't be shaped like this. It'll be wider, but you can fold it in half and then it'll be this shape. So I am going to cut some three and a half inch squares and some one and three quarter inch squares. Now that we have all the pieces cut, we're going to take our light squares here and we're gonna draw two lines on the back side of them. So first we're going to draw one line from corner to corner. So you might have to move your ruler over a little because the pencil has a little bit of width and we want that line going right from corner to corner. I like to use a pencil, there's chalk pencils, there's a lot of good marking tools, but just a regular pencil works fine. Now, we need to draw another line a half inch away. So this is the easiest way, is with this little half inch ruler here. If you don't have a half inch ruler, you can simply take your big plastic ruler and move it over half of an inch. That also works, but I find this is handy dandy. So we're gonna mark some of them going this way and the other half going the other way. So the first line is always gonna go in the middle. It's that second line. So this second line needs to be on this side, on this block here. I've got all the pieces I need for the first heart. So we have two bigger rectangles. We've got this one drawn up to the right and this one drawn up to the left. And then we've got four little squares, which we will use afterwards. So I'm just gonna set these here so I know which way they go. And I am going to stitch right on top of this pencil line or a little bit to this side of it, a little bit towards the corner. Then I'm gonna turn it around. I'm not even gonna take it off the machine. I'm not even gonna trim that thread and I'm gonna stitch on the other pencil line. Okay. 
And we'll do the same thing on this second corner here. Again, we're stitching a little bit to the side of the pencil line, the side towards that corner there. Now we're going to take these little squares. So two of them are gonna go on the top here. I'm gonna line them up, and I like to set both of them on here right now. They fit right on there. They're exactly, two of them are exactly the same size as that when you put them side by side. And I'm gonna stitch this way and this way. Now I didn't mark these with pencil, but I have a piece of painter's tape on my machine here. It's going straight from the needle hole straight down. And if I put this corner at the needle and this corner on this line here like this, as I sew, I will have a nice straight line that goes from corner to corner. And that saves a lot of time because I didn't have to draw all of those pencil lines. So put this corner right at the needle and then line this up so you can swivel it. Put it so that the corner is right on the tape and as you stitch, you keep it on the edge of the tape. So we're going to do that for all of these guys. The next step is to iron these up. So I always iron them flat first, just the way they were stitched. Now we're going to peel this over so it's folding right along its stitching line. Give it a little pressing. And then this corner also. And then this is going to fold back like this. I always like to fold it back and iron first because then I can make sure I have it sewn correctly. So if I folded it over and it was, for instance, facing like that, that would mean I didn't stitch very um, straight and I would have to take that stitching out. So if the corners meet everywhere, that's good. Now we want to cut off the excess. So we've got two extra layers back here. I like to use scissors on these small triangles. So I'm just cutting so that I'm leaving a quarter inch seam allowance there and there. Now this one here, it's a little bit bigger. You can use your scissors and cut right in the middle, or you can get your rotary cutter and a straight edge and cut right in the middle. So this is half of the heart. We'll do the same thing over here. And then we're gonna take this piece, we're gonna save all these up, and these are what are going to make our pinwheel blocks. Now all we have to do is sew the two halves of the heart together. And for some reason, I find it easier to stitch from the bottom of the heart toward the top. So I'm gonna line everything up. So there's the heart block, and now we can move on to the pinwheel blocks. So I went ahead and stitched up all the heart blocks, and these are the part that we cut off of each heart block. So I'm going to just iron this toward the dark color, and then I am going to trim off these dog ears, and these are going to make the pinwheel blocks. So I'm gonna take two matching ones. So we'll take these two pink, then I'm gonna take two other ones that have the same color background, but have a different dark print, and I'm gonna make a pinwheel out of these. So let's see if I can get this right here. We've got two like that, and two like that. Now we just stitch them together. The pinwheels are pretty easy to sew together because the seam allowances are all facing opposite directions. So this one's going this way, on the bottom it's going the opposite way. So you can line these up here real easy and we're going to stitch right down this edge. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to leave it on the machine and grab these other two pieces, put them right sides together, match it up carefully, and then I am going to press the top seam allowance or this from the top half here, I'm gonna press it to the left and give it a nice hard press right in the middle because it's thick there. And then this half is going to go that way. And now it's real easy to get that intersection 
matched up without doing anything special. So I'm just lining up the top, stitching a quarter inch there, and I'm betting that my intersection is just about perfect. Yep. So we'll give this a pressing with the iron now. Now the pinwheel is ready for some borders. So we're going to take this one and a quarter inch piece that we cut earlier, and we're gonna cut it into segments like this, five inches and six and a half inches, and those will go around all the pinwheels. Now there's not quite enough pieces when you cut this to do all the pinwheels. So we're gonna take one or two of the scraps we had left from when we cut the hearts, and we're going to cut the rest of the borders and we're going to reserve the rest of these for the binding. All the blocks are done and I'm ready to lay out the quilt. Now I've got a lot more heart blocks than I do pinwheel blocks, so we're gonna lay out a lot more of these. Now when I tried this out earlier, I noticed that it really just looks kind of busy with the blocks right next to themselves, even if they were all hearts. So. I went ahead and cut some six and a half inch squares. That's the same size as all these blocks here. And I'm just going to alternate these. And I think it makes everything look a lot better. So this is what you can do. Anytime your blocks are quite busy, just put in some plain blocks between. I have everything laid out now, and I'm not real picky about what's gonna go where. If you have one color that's very prominent, like this dark red here, that's what I'm going to focus on, making sure it's spread out and balanced, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. It's supposed to have a nice scrappy look. So now all I have to do is sew all the blocks together, and then I'm gonna put one border on it, and I can get it onto the quilting machine. I have the quilt on the quilting machine. The red border frames it very nicely, that dark color. That does look really good on here. I like that strong border. For thread colors, we could use white. It's going to not show in the big squares. It'll show a little bit here. We could use blue if we wanted our threads to show quite a bit. So that is going to show on here. That actually is going to look pretty good. I'm going to quilt it in a heart pattern, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the blue rather than the pink, which will really recede. The quilting pattern is called Whimsical Hearts. And this is nice because the hearts go in all directions, so there's not an up or a down, and the swirls between them all fill in the space nicely. The quilt is done. It turned out about 46 by 57. It's just a nice gift size quilt. Those little hearts and the pinwheel blocks, they look really good with that plain background color between them. And you can see the quilting here. There's little hearts. You can't see the blue thread very much, but it pops up. And so it's nice to see those little hearts there. Now on the back side, there's a nice old fashioned Valentine's print. This looks exactly like the Valentine's we used to give out when we were in elementary school, just like that. And the binding, the binding is done with those remnant pieces we had left over. And so there's, th I used three or four different colors around the edge, but it makes a really nice binding. We hope you enjoyed our tutorial today on how to make the hearts and pinwheel quilt. Now, we've got another giveaway. I made a pattern called diamonds. You may have seen our video that shows you how to make this, but this is today's giveaway. So all you have to do to enter is click the link below the video that says giveaway and put in your name and your email address. And we can send this to any address in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials, the best thing you can do to support us is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.